Hey YouTube, welcome back to a journey with GSAP for Bricks. In this episode 3, we dig deeper into our learning with timeline animations. Building on the foundation laid in our first two episodes, we are set to elevate the skills and knowledge even further. So let's go. So this is what we will be building today. Let me refresh. Let's look at that again. Yeah, so it's a um, GSAP timeline and it flows in the header, the heading, the circles, the body text, CTA button, and the big image. It flows in sequentially. So let's learn how to do this. Okay, first things first, uh, I had already installed the GSAP library and connect it to the external text editor which is the code sandbox and uh, so we could edit the gsap script um, please watch episode one if you don't know how to do this it'll explain how to install gsap and create a external uh, text editor to modify your gsap script okay okay let's get into it now for the bricks setup for speed's sake i just went to the templates and downloaded something quick just to show you um, to be more focusing on the animation aspect so went to the community templates and i grabbed the header reality header and reality home section as the hero area and i modified the layout like so i got rid of the two images and made it into one and I added a couple of circles and changed the font, but it's the same structure. So for the circle, I placed it inside the parent uh, div, which is this one here. And I set that to uh, relative, like so. And the yellow circle, I positioned that as absolute. And right 125, bottom minus 65, and it's got a width and height of 20 rem. And for the green circle, I have it as absolute as well. And also top minus 95, right minus 95, 30 rem. So it gets that perfect uh, circle. And as for the image, uh, I have put a um, a block wrapper around the image to use that as a mask and for this mask I have a class which um, I have uh, let's see yeah overflow hidden so that um, it'll mask out the image later when it animates in which uh, I will show you in the script how to do okay Okay, let's head over to the sandbox environment and start writing the script. So we need to create a variable and give it a name. So we always start with let, or you could write const as well, depending on your situation. So I need to create a variable name. In my case, I want to say TL. It's abbreviation for timeline. So this name could be whatever you like you want to call it, because we're going to reference this uh, variable name later on in the animation. Uh, in this block of animation. Okay, so once that's done, so now we're gonna say gsap dot timeline and close this first line. So we're just telling uh, the browser there's gonna be a sequences of um, animation of the DOM elements. Okay, so now let's start with our variable name that we declared, which is TL, and we wanna say from and this is the uh, technique that I taught you, the basic animation from the episode two. So be sure to check that out before uh, jumping into this. Yeah, so uh, from, we want to declare, we, or we should, I'm sorry, we should target which uh, element that we want to animate. So in this case, I want to animate the, the header first. So I already know the class name that I declared. So it would be EP3 header. After the quote, put a comma, 
and then put in the curly braces we want to put in the animation properties so i wanted to come from uh, above the viewport out of the viewport from the top and come down of the full height of the header so i like to use the percentage y because along the y-axis uh, negative number is up and the positive number is from below so percent I want to say minus 100 percent and uh, duration let's do one second <coughs> excuse me so I save uh, let's have a look in the front end cool okay let's move on Okay, now let's try to animate the, the circle. Okay, we have a class name of the circle, ep3-circle. And let's continue here. So dot from, and let's target the circle, dot ep3-circle. And put a comma after the quotes. Let's give it some animation properties. This time, let's do a scale from zero uh, comma uh, do opacity from zero and uh, we shouldn't close it on every line because we want to group each of the sequence within uh, one sequence so we'll just put that closing semicolon at the end and don't put it there okay so let's save it uh, let's bring this down there and refresh in the front end cool okay next up let's animate this header give it a text reveal type of animation similar to what we saw in the episode 2 so one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video is that on each of the uh, heading element I separated it to a as you can see in my uh, DOM tree here uh, its own line your uh, trusted broker and each of the line I put in a div block um, a mask which will uh, cause the the mask reveal effect and uh, and the mask same thing uh, as always uh, like the other with the image that I've shown you I did a overflow hidden on it which will uh, do a nice uh, mask effect which you will see shortly and I did that to all three uh, lines of text Okay, so let's go back to GSAP and uh, let's format this nicely and then put in dot from and I need to target the class which I called it uh, EP3 hero heading, right? Okay, dot EP3 hero heading do it right yes okay comma give some animation properties I want to do I want to have it come from uh, above to its original position so we do that y percent again at 100% Oop, minus 100% come from the top and uh, let's start with that first see how what that looks like nice one by one and uh, later on the video once we complete all the animation sequence I will show you how to um, adjust the timing so it, it has a little bit more of a, a smooth feel but let me refresh that one more time and as you can see uh, the text comes down in one swoop let's fix that let's change that to stagger give it a stagger effect yeah so S-T-A-G-G-R and uh, let's give it like a 0 0.02 and have a quick peek what that looks like nice okay let's continue um, let's give it a little rotation uh, rotation let's do this time minus nine degrees save let's see what that looks like ah, okay there's a little bit of a bottom of the text is showing so that means we need to bring it up further up so it hides behind the mask. So let's say 120 percent. Better. 
Okay, now uh, let's try, let's change the easing. So let's go to GSAP's uh, website, go to the easing section, and let's see what powerful looks like. Nice, let's grab this guy, copy, and for the ease, we'll create power four, because I kind of like that in the sample. Let's have a quick look. Nice. Okay, and then finally, let's add a duration of one second. Quick refresh. Cool. Oh, by the way, um, th I'll leave a link down below of this uh, easing sampler so you could uh, quickly access it, okay? All right, so let's, um, what else could we animate? Let's, oh yeah, we gotta do the, the hero text. So, uh, bring down the semicolon to the end. Let's start from, and let's target the hero text, which is called hero text. Okay, dot ep3 hero text and comma, adding the animation property for this one let's have it come from bottom up so let's say just simply y axis 30 of y below and let's do an opacity come from zero if i spell that wrong opacity and what else um, let's do a duration of one okay let's save that a quick look okay let's move on to the button okay now I want to animate the button I want it to hinge rotate from left bottom of this button so it'll swivel like this okay so uh, let me just write the code you'll know what I mean so let's target um, the button class so dot from uh, let's target the button class, which is EP3 hero button. And let's give it some animation properties. Uh, this one is new. It's called transform origin. And I want, uh, oh, I spelled that wrong. It should be M there. Origin, uh, let's say left bottom of the button that is the the hinge point where it's going to rotate around and I want to rotate 45 degrees and let's give it opacity from zero and finally let's give it a ease of power for out okay let's save it and have a look at the front end Okay, why? Oh, hello. Opacity was spelled wrong. Okay. Okay, let's quickly animate the yellow circle. Okay, let's give it a from again. Let's target the class. And I think I named it EP3 Circle 2, I believe, yeah. And comma, animation property, let's scale from zero, just like the other circle. And opacity, zero. Save, have a look. Okay, now I'm going to animate in this uh, hero image. And it's going to start from nothing. It's going to expand, revealing the full image to the right until it fills up the whole column, like so. And um, I shown you a moment ago how to create a mask using the div block 
uh, to reveal the text but this time I want to show you a different masking technique and I want you to go to this website it's called um, uh, CSS Clip Path Maker and I will leave a link down below in the description and basically there are a bunch of uh, shapes mask shapes in, in the form of clip path and CSS that you could utilize to um, mask it around your DOM elements in your layouts so in my case I want to pick the trapezoid because my image is rectangular it has four corners and as you can see uh, wherever the shapes the corners are allocated you can see the the coordinates uh, changing and that's really the the CSS uh, is being written right for us which is a clip path um, attributes so I wanted to start from nothing like so and as you can see this is the code that's been given to us and we're going to be utilizing that as our starting point of our animation for the image okay let's head over to the bricks environment and let's animate this image so let me check the class name that I assigned ep3 image let me just copy that to the clipboard and let's get that animating so in episode 2 we learned about dot from and we also learned about dot to so in this lesson we're going to learn about uh, dot from to okay and uh, let's target the class of the image which is that and let's put in a uh, square the brackets chain it with the second one so what this means is that from uh, where the image should be animating from and to will be positioned here so the animation property from belongs here and animation property to belongs here so what I mean by that is uh, from we want this image totally be hidden and in the clippy we have it uh, hidden totally like so and it gave us this uh, CSS code to to use so we're gonna do that as from uh, state or beginning state so let me just grab it I don't need a semicolon let's just grab that and then go back to our code sandbox in our from state let's put that in there okay so uh, in GSAP is basically JavaScript right so unfortunately uh, it doesn't uh, does not understand the CSS clip path property so we need to rewrite that a little bit so that GSAP can understand in all the JavaScript as you know it's a camel case uh, there's no hyphen so as the second word instead of a hyphen the second uh, word gets initialized uh, capital so it becomes clip path with a camel case so after the colon uh, as we saw before like the, all the quotes we need to put this animation property inside a quote so let's do that okay so the initial state is complete so now let's do the uh, excuse me the from state is complete now let's do the to state the ending state so let's it'll be like that all the way full to the right on the right side which is revealing the full image so let me just copy this state which wrote the CSS for us grabbed it like so and then let's come back here and uh, let's put it in there and do something similar and camel case that and put this in the quote Okay, and let's save it okay so you formatted it nicely for us thank you course inbox and uh, by the way this one I'll, I'll leave a link down below for this uh, tool okay so uh, let's have a look in the front end of 
cool. Let's make it a little cooler now, okay? Okay, so let's go back to uh, the code sandbox. And um, what I want to do is, oh, by the way, in bricks, uh, similar to the, the text stuff, I also put a, a mask around. And then what I, the technique that I'm about to do uh, will be benefited from having the uh, block, uh, div block, I should say, uh, creating a mask as well. So this technique will be benefiting from the div block, okay? So the clip path that we provided uh, is simply reveal the image, but we could also chain in additional animation property like the from state or the original state. We could say scale up, like maybe, um, let's just for giggles put five, like make it really huge. And then two to original, back to original state. Let's scale it back down to uh, original, state which is one meaning back to its original size so save it and let's check it out okay whoa the duration we need to fix okay so here let's chain in duration let's say something like um, three seconds let's check that out Ooh, okay, the scale is way too big, but I did, like I said, I did that for giggles. Let's scale it down to about three. And then let's add in another chain. Um, let's add an ease. I noticed another ease, which is kind of cool. It's uh, expo out. Let's use that. Okay, now let's have a look. Okay, now let's animate these two circles. I want to have a, I wanted to have a infinite uh, soft hovering up and down effect. So let's go back to the text editor, and we need to create a new chain of timeline animation events. Okay, so we cannot uh, merge it with this one. So this is like a different, separate animation. So I, I need to write a new um, timeline. And I want it to happen uh, slightly before uh, the timeline that we just created. So let's create a new timeline events now. Uh, let's call, start with let and give it a variable name, float tl. And again, uh, you could uh, title this however you like, okay? So gsap, and we're telling the browser this is gonna be a timeline animation and Let's close that and start with floatl dot. And this time I want to use two uh, technique animation. I want it to go uh, up and down. Okay, so two, uh, let's target our class dot ep3 circle. That's our green circle. And then give it some animation properties. So let's, I want it to start from uh, y axis uh, top down. So start, um, let's do minus 2rem and uh, GSAP uh, accepts the REM values and let's give it a duration of one second and uh, let's see what else is there. Let's do an ease of power one dot and out and for now, let's just do like repeat five times just to have a look what it's doing. Okay, so it formatted it nicely for us. Refresh. Okay, so yep, it's working. So you should do it five times and stop, but there is a jerkiness, so let's fix that. Um, there is a property called yo-yo. So let's put it in there, yo-yo and true. So basically, it's like a yo-yo. It goes, you know, how yo-yo spins downwards. When it hits the bottom, it spins back up. So in the similar way, let me refresh it. The jerkiness should go away. Perfect. Okay, so let's uh, do the 
the other circle. So let me just copy this guy up to here. And I want to target uh, the circle 2, which is the yellow one. And let's do the same, but this one, let's start it from the y-axis uh, bottom up. A little different. And, um, oh, do you remember in the episode 2, if you watch, uh, repeat minus 1 means inf infinity. So it'll forever uh, go in a loop. So this time, if I refresh it, okay, something's not going right here. Why? Oh, because I forgot to put the variable name in there. Okay, let me try that now. Okay, perfect. Now the last thing we need to do is um, let's speed everything up, you know, because users don't want to uh, wait for every piece of animation finish and the next one starts finish wait for the next one start finish so this is gonna take way too long so we need to make it much more smoother so let's do that now okay so uh, let's make it more smoother but before we do that uh, if you are paying attention you notice I wrote the code a little differently than down here I only wrote the variable name that I declared only once and everything down below I did not use that variable name why because um, here I closed it on one line of uh, animation with a semicolon. So on the other one down below, you could remove one and let this one close everything. So technically, you don't have to put the semicolon after end of each of the animation line. And then I could get rid of that now. So it's a slightly bit cleaner. So I save it just to prove it to you should be the same okay so you get the idea so now let's smooth out the animation so let's go back to our first uh, TL variable timeline and let's start um, chaining uh, smooth it out so it'll go more swiftly throughout the uh, animation okay so let's start from uh, so we have the first animation uh, starting. Uh, it comes from above down below. So on this animation, which is the heading, comes in next. So here you should add a comma, quote, and I want you to put in uh, less than. So what this means is that I want this animation to come in at the same time as this animation header. So for the time being, let me just do that to every one of them. So you have to position it at the end, oops, like that, of the uh, animation property. So you go through each of the chain events and simply put this. And we'll adjust it uh, accordingly after when we're done, okay? So let's see on this one. Let's put it uh, at the end here. Now, when I save it, everything should be animating it at the same time. Okay, so it all happened at once. So let's give it a little offset. How do we do that? So. Um, Let's see, go here on the first. What you do is you offset it by 0.02. You could put it like uh, wh whatever value that you think it'll work the best. But in, in my experience, um, 0.2 seems to be really good offset point. And then 0.02, oops, 0.2. Let me just write this out and explain what this is doing. Oh, and here as well. There. So basically, 
uh, this animation sequence it's gonna t before everything was happening at the same time so this is happening point two seconds later than this event and this one is happening point two second later than the previous uh, animation and so forth and so forth okay so I saved it let's have a quick look much better there you go and uh, that's it for this tutorial uh, again is this was a long one so but I had to explain a lot of the uh, the nuances that goes in to creating uh, timeline animation so I hope you enjoyed that one and um, I'll see you in the next one so please uh, like and subscribe and um, have a great day thanks bye